Hey everyone, welcome back to Winterfell Camp, Be Lad from the Woods. We're doing another copy of the vlog. Uh, update on the poacher situation. Okay, so yesterday um, I brought uh, a picture of the uh, license plate in the back of the truck over to the transfer station because I knew that the fellow that comes there to do our you know, he runs the transfer station. He has a red four-door Dodge. So, um, but he wasn't there. And uh, the other guy was. So I show him the picture. And he says, oh, yeah, that's, and he gave me the name. We're not going to mention the name. Um, although he, he had nothing to do with uh, being here. Uh, anyways, uh, so um, I uh, got, you know, I found out where he lived. I went and vis. I went paid a visit first time I went there there was no uh, there was nobody uh, well there was nobody like the there was, the truck wasn't in the yard and uh, so I went over to the store and said listen uh, you know you know the guy that lives blah blah blah, blah. and uh, you know they said oh yeah 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 and I said well you tell him to reach out to me and it would be in his real best interest to do that because you know poaching on my land right so anyways um all right fine that's what they said i came back here and um because of the people that were you know going on about this accident in fallbrook i mean i did call the opp which i really didn't want to do which i've already spoken about but uh anyways um they uh um they called back, asked me a few more questions. I gave it to them. And then I decided to drive back to where he lives. He was there when I got there. So anyways, uh, I show him the picture and I said, like, we have a problem. And he says, well, it's not my truck. And I'm like, looking at the red Dodge that's there. And I'm like, yeah, that's not your truck. All right. Um, anyways, uh, unless he suddenly put a cap on overnight, Unless he, uh, unless he um, uh, changed the interior of his truck, because the truck that I saw inside was blue, uh, had a blue interior, his was a black interior. So, anyways, um, so it was definitely not him. So his wife was there too. She was very, very, very nice, and uh, um, she'd actually seen the thing. I'd put it up on the uh, the Facebook groups because like, I'm assuming she's a member of Lanark community or something. I think she said something about that. Anyways, uh, they're both a nice couple, and uh, they're newcomers to the area and stuff. But anyways, um, he uh, runs a small business here, which I'm assuming does well. So um, anyway. That's that with him, so that's over with. Um, glad it wasn't him, because we uh, talk whenever he's working, so when, when I go there. Um, so there you be on that one. So anyways, um, then the police called back again, and they said, listen, the, uh, it came back, you know, well, the plate that you're giving us is not the name that you gave us. And I said, well, it's not that guy. And then they said, well, irregardless the plate that you gave on the red truck isn't the same vehicle that we're looking for for the accident I'm like oh, okay that makes sense well at least we've eliminated that possibility now thankfully hopefully they'll catch the idiot that ran this family off there were some severe uh, injuries to the children is what I'm I'm understanding uh, when I say that though take it with a grain of salt because I'm really not getting you know very clear information kind of thing and uh, that's nobody's fault. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, whatever the police release in the newspaper. But, of course, when you go to Facebook groups or places like that, you know, it's all talk. You know, I, I went in. That's actually then I um, I wanted to see if there was more information on the Fallbrook thing. So, And I wanted to see because I knew it was another place with a, a four-door red Dodge. So I drove into the village of Lanark and uh, I went and drove to the place I thought, you know, I, you know, I thought, uh, I didn't think, I know for sure there was a four-door red Dodge there periodically uh, parked there or more often parked there. Not sure it's the same one, but I thought I would check. Anyway, it wasn't there. So anyways, an old, old friend uh, at the Fry Wagon uh, saw me and came out and we uh, talked for 30, 40 minutes. Uh, he's had a rough time. He's got, uh, he's got an ongoing liver cancer he's uh, battling. So 
Anyways, I told him, I said, well, I'm going to go up to Pretty Goods and go visit April at the store and say good day, and uh, I'll show her the plate because she's kind of connected into the whole planet and stuff. And uh, um, she wasn't there. It was the other, uh, it was the young lad that uh, works during the day with the beard. So he's, he's a really good guy. Anyways, um, so I wasn't able to show April the, uh, the, the plate and everything. So... I uh, grabbed a couple of snacks and stuff, and I came back here, and uh, that was it. So um, I kept my mom about 90% out of the deal, although some things occurred that uh, I'm probably going to have to move my mom out of the house over there. Um, you know how something smacks you in the face? You've been trying to ignore it or think, oh, it's okay, or, you know, I'm doing right by her by keeping her there longer and all that stuff that I can but her reaction yesterday to me being out and about and she had called me and I said yeah I'm in town I'm going to go visit April for a little bit and uh, you know talk to a few people I didn't give a time when I came back well phone rings after I do start to head back phone rings my mom again freaking out crying just losing it i'm like what the fuck's the matter ma i said i'm on my way there i'm bringing your butter tarts i said i i uh i uh, i said to her i said like i reached out earlier to see if you wanted more butter tarts because i had already uh picked up a dozen anyways uh she didn't need any more but oh my gosh she was just she totally lost it so i came back home and the cake that she was giving to me that she made a couple of days ago was hung on the door outside in a bag. And the door was locked. I'm like, what the fuck? So anyways, I knock on the door, knock on the door. She finally comes to the door. She's still upset and crying. I'm like, Ma, I never told you I was going to be back in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. I said, I went to go see your friend April. I told you that specifically and I asked you about butter tarts. Didn't matter. I don't even know if she remembered I told her. And uh, I'm standing there, and now I'm starting to get worked up and everything. And yes, Digger, I do have to take care of myself. And that's when I realized, I'm like, this is not a healthy situation for her or for me anymore. Um, and uh, as much as I love my mother and everything, I'm not willing to plant myself in the ground for the situation just to keep her in the house. Not abandoning her. I would never do that. But I mean, you know, keeping her in the house when she clearly can't function and I can't have that hanging over me you know if I go somewhere and I'm five minutes later or whatever or she forgets and then she completely loses it um, that can't happen for her health and for mine so tomorrow I'm going to call the doctors and uh, make an appointment uh, about this I think my social worker maybe would be more accurate um, the one thing I'm facing though is that uh, every time I bring my mom to the doctor she pulls herself together and up and then puts on uh, you know an act I guess is the way I could say that um, so the doctor thinks everything's fine now my then the same doctor I have will ask me how you know how she is and I'm like well this this and this oh well she was pretty sharp so you see I'm in this little circle I'm like that's not what's happening on, the, on a daily, regular basis. Now, I don't think my doctor's stupid or anything like that, obviously, but uh, I'm gonna to have to talk to my social worker and uh, figure out something. And even if they send people the tester or something, I don't know if that's what they do with people that are getting older, but uh, I mean, you know, they'll test her, be there for 15 minutes. Well, that's not an accurate representation of what's going on. And uh, so for her, and then me, where I'm, covered with all this and smothered by this because you know if, if if she was fine you know it would be like oh okay you know kind of thing you're late no big deal that's the way she was all her life up until this my mom has always been a worrier i've said that to you guys she's the type that's the uh you know chicken little the sky is falling kind of thing and uh, that's fine that's hers i don't live like that i told her i said i can't live like that i can't live this is why I don't live under her roof. I can't live in your world of, chick, you know, the sky is falling. Otherwise, I might just as well be dead. Because that's how I look at it. Holy shit, are the leaves ever coming down? 
Can you guys see all that coming down? It's just like rain. Everything that Andre raked is all covered in leaves again. I might just as well have had, uh, uh, you know, uh, had him wait to, to rake. But anyways, uh, just moving you guys a little further back to, you know. So, anyways, that copy of the vlog, eh, right? And uh, that's not donkey butter. It's, uh, oh, it's one of the ones off the res. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it's quite good. It's one of those ones that's got infused things in it. So, it's more of a sativa, so it keeps me sharp rather than um, indica, which kind of flattens my ass. Anyways, um, it's around 1.30, quarter to 2, so um, I'm starting to debate whether I should go fishing. I want to go fishing. I reached out to Andre, and then Andre, it turns out, was really sick yesterday, and uh, I'll be right back. Well, I can see, can I, I can take you guys with me, eh? I don't have to put the thing up. Okay, I'm just reheating my coffee and I'm grabbing my phone. I had put it on the, uh, on the, oh, there's those little bugs I'm looking for to eat spider mites. They're here. Um, that's excellent. I'll show you that digger. I'll get some pictures of these. Uh, I'm told they're not actually ladybugs and they do have different colorings on them and stuff, but they eat spider mites. That's all I can tell you. So I can take two or three of them. I throw them in the grow tent. They don't, they're already coming in here anyways. I mean, uh, the, they always seem to get in these little bugs. It doesn't matter unless you have a completely hermetically sealed house. They they get in. Anyway, they're no fuss. They don't cause any fuss. And, uh, you know, they don't live uh, um, very long, like months at a time, I don't think, anyways. Because I put them in the tent and eventually they disappear. But I've had a couple of spider mite invasions and they, they cleaned it right up. So I did get some neem oil or, well some stuff to treat I don't know what I where I put it here um, oh here it is I got some of this I talked to a few other older growers and uh, they told me that you can use that and you don't have to do a mix of neem oil or anything like that that's too much time on the coffee it'll be near boiling um, so but so far the one I brought in and put in the tent in the back. Um, Wally, watch out. Watch out, buddy. Um, uh, you know, it's not a good thing usually to bring plants that have been outside inside. That's kind of like a rule, eh? Uh, now, I don't have any... I didn't have any other plants in the tent because I harvested the other one, but... Um, and it, it did have a spider, my, uh, spider mites on it, so... I put it out overnight because it was really cold, so the spider mites didn't like that, so off they went, kind of thing, so there's no more spider mites. I just have to now trim it and, and put it in a jar to cure, but uh, that was my fruity pebbles. And uh, this one that's in there is peach rings, um, so and it was budding sitting here. It's the, it's the one I abused, the plant that I abused terribly, and it just wouldn't die, so it's like, all right, well, I'll risk spider mites in the tent, no big deal. You know, they're not that hard to deal with. Everybody gets all panicked about them. It's like you can't... Anyways. When you've been around a long time growing and stuff, you just know how to deal with that stuff without getting into a panic. So, anyways. Um, so, that's about it. I don't really know what else to tell you folks. Uh, I'm trying to sit here and decide about fishing. Actually, the reason I went in too is I was getting my phone to see if Andre had texted back um, he says he can go but it's just a way I could probably come out yeah for sure but my wife will need the car to go get the kids because they have you know kids shared custody so they're in, in Ottawa so they got to be so she's got she's got to have the car Okay, so it's just me, I need to go get him and then bring him back because she needs the car at five. Okay, well then that would make it different in the way that instead of fishing out this way, let's see, 
Now, by the time I go to his house, it'll be like three o'clock. So it'd be stupid to go pick him up, bring him back and hook up the boat. What I would need to do is hook up the boat now, bring the boat with me and then fish somewhere down his way. Um, maybe Rito Lake. Well, that will bring me to the next thing I got to do. I got to check the gas because with all this running around, I put $60 of gas in. And with all this running around, trying to chase this idiot down and all the rest of it, uh, I used up quite a bit of gas. and I may have used up all my boating gas to go anywhere far. Like to go to Robertson Lake would be no big deal. But um, just going to check the gas situation. Yeah, in retrospect, it was a bummer that I, I should have thought about the gas situation when I was doing the running around, but I was so determined to catch this guy. And I'm going to. It's not if. Oh, it's not. Uh, it's not if I'm going to catch him. Um, and I can look the camera back in the eye again, and if I see you, Mr. Four Door Red Truck. Um, and I'm going to be putting the picture of the plate in this video. I forgot yesterday, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking at you, pal. Don't worry. I, I'm going to find you. And the longer it takes me to get to you, the more angry I'm getting. Okay. Think about that a minute. says there's a hundred hundred and twenty kilometers of fuel in it and that's just sitting here so when you're you know you're driving and then pulling the boat that'll definitely drop so I really wouldn't even have enough gas I have enough gas to go to Robertson Lake and back no problem there but getting him back and forth that's a different thing um, this may be not happening with him today. I really want to fish with Andre, but I'm just checking my, my bank account here. The peanuts, I know there's a few dollars in it, but I'm going to need the gas to go back and, yeah, there's $80 in it. And, uh, see, I have to go to the hospital Tuesday morning for stress tests. Um, and that's at 1030 in the morning and, um, I'm just thinking maybe it would be better that, uh, I could do that cause I have to go regardless. So I'll be taking money out of that money. Cause I'm, you know, I save that for my, you know, in case I got to go places during the week and, um, oh, I mean, I've got spare gas in the spare gas can too. Uh, we don't need to fill, uh, there's lots of gas in the boat. Um, oh, that reminds me, I have to fix one of the gas tanks there. I got to get a flat screwdriver um, out and fix that. So I guess we're going to do that today. That'll be a separate video because this is the coffee and vlog thing. Oh, wow. And timing too, eh? Time I get to his place, even if he's ready right away, it's going to be after 3.30. And uh, then by the time we head out, and I'd say we'd go to the Rio Lake, we'd be there 4, 4.30, 5. And that's such a big lake. I'd want to be up there earlier. Um, I'm going to talk to him and see if he wants to go to Rito Lake on Tuesday. We'll see how the wind is and stuff, because Rito's it's a bigger lake, so... Uh, you got to be aware of the wind for that one. So, um, all these flying bugs around, I couldn't figure out what it was until one landed on me and it's those orange kind of like ladybug bugs. So I guess they just had their big hats because they're flying around everywhere outside here. And I, I mean, it, it, inside they rarely fly. So anyway, and if they did, the cats see them and chase them. Well, I'm going to do that. I think, I think I'll just wave off today going out his way um 
still could go to Robertson, but then I still got to work on this. And uh, I don't know. God damn it. I don't want to waste another day just sitting here. See, uh, what's happening is, is Wednesday it's supposed to rain all day. Monday is nice weather. Tuesday, obviously. Uh, and then like in the, in the, 20 Celsius range, that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit for you Americans. Uh, for the next, like today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's it's still warm, but we're getting rain all day because there's a system coming in, which is a cold front. And then the next day it's sunny, but now the high is only like 10 Celsius. So it's quite a bit colder. So I want to take advantage of this nice weather being in the boat. Not like it can stop me fishing, stop us fishing from you know, the temperature just dressed different, right? And I got my boots and uh, uh, Andre that wouldn't need it. Well, he might, because he could now be the one at the back when I'm backing the boat in. But I mean, he's got waders as well. So there's no issue with the cold water and all that uh, and getting our feet wet. So I think, yeah, we're gonna plan this a little different. And uh, he, um, turns out him and the wife share, well, no, they're, I guess, yeah, they share with their family uh, two cabins up on a lake near, oh God, the name of that place again. Um, it's beautiful up there and they, they were gonna go up because they need to go shut it down because it hasn't been shut down for the winter yet and uh, they need to get up there. Um, Okay, it's, it's near Perry Sound, which is kind of, like it's on Georgian Bay, the same you know place that I fish, but instead of being like, okay, that looks like Michigan. So, you know, pretend that that is Ontario, okay? This is my finger, that's Bruce Peninsula. Lake Huron is right here. And then here, going this way, that's Georgian Bay that is obviously off of Lake Huron. So where I'm always in Georgian Bay is up here where Bruce Peninsula is. It's over here on this side of Ontario and Georgian Bay, which is Perry Sound. You guys, you want to know, you can look up on a map. I mean, any of you that are locals, because I found out there's locals and people watching and everything. So uh, I think I mentioned it already in one of the other videos, but I'm putting this one up already. So they're going to be a little bit out of order, but because of this incident here and then the heart thing, so, and I've got, a, it, it's 22 minutes. I'm gonna, I'll, we'll, we'll shop this at 25 minutes. But uh, yeah, just to quickly go, I went to a lake. Uh, it was way, 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 it's all been filmed. I filmed it. I filmed what happened to me where I thought I was having a heart attack. I'll be putting it up. Um, I, it's a 45 minute drive into the bush, 45 minute drive out of the bush. Got here, didn't feel right. Called the, called 911, they said, Probably air on the side of caution. Uh, we're gonna bring you to Perth Hospital. I was there for six hours. They did all sorts of tests. I came, my test came back. My blood pressure was super high. It was 180 over whatever, but I hadn't had my blood pressure meds and of course being upset and everything. So um, they said, okay, well, we still want you to come back on this Tuesday, which I've just spoken about um, for stress tests. And that's where you go on the treadmill and all that. So anyways, uh, I think maybe we could turn Tuesday into a fishing day and then the cooler weekend. But I'm also going to talk to them because they got to go up to their cottage. And I'm thinking maybe not this coming weekend, but yeah, it's Halloween weekend. I don't know if he'd want to go for that. All right. Well, listen, I'm trying to figure out something without talking to him first. And, uh, We'll see what's going on and then I'll be back. But anyway, so this copy of V-Log is over with. So the poacher hasn't been caught yet. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is, you know, we move on from here. Uh, dealing with my mother, like I said, I'll have to call the uh, social worker and stuff like that because uh, I was rather uh, smashed in the face yesterday and the reality came, came crashing home. So, all right, everyone. Well, thanks for coming as always. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment, comment, comment. Okay. If you want to help uh, my, support my works, it's paypal.com slash slide from the woods. Uh, and buy me a copy slash, dot com slash from the woods of the woods. And, uh, 
Uh, if you want to join the Patreon, it's two bucks a month and you get private pictures and other private stuff going on in there. Um, stuff that I really can't put out on YouTube, okay? And that's about it, man. So thanks for coming. Digger, thanks for caring. Uh, good thoughts. And I am going to take care of myself because I really know, I really need to go see you. So, uh, I want to, I, I, I'm not going to go drop dead on you before I meet you, Digger. At least I got to meet you once anyways, brother. And Ohio ain't all that far anyways. And I've been there before a while. So, and it's my, hey, I might even bring the boat. There's, uh, I know that there's rivers and lakes that my cousins used to fish. So I'll take you fishing. Anyways, I'm running on again. Uh, be good to your fellow humans if you can. And peace. Long life and live long and prosper. I love those words. Be good, everybody. Bye bye.